a one-way ticket to Rwanda. That's what you'd get if you dare to come to the UK illegally. That's the promise of UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak. The aim, stopping small boats, one of his five key pledges for 2023. The deal has currently cost the British government about 300 million US dollars, but no one has been deported yet. My patience with this has worn thin. The biggest hurdles of the scheme concerns about the safety of Rwanda for refugees, the country's ability to accommodate them and mounting economic costs. Sunak is eager to fly illegal migrants out of Britain and the shortcut for him now is to prove that Rwanda is a safe country for refugees and this has drawn much criticism in the UK and beyond. Domestically, the UK Supreme Court in November 2023 concluded that Rwanda was currently not a safe country for refugees because asylum seekers may be returned to their countries of origin where they may face ill treatment. Internationally, the European Court of Human Rights in Strasbourg suspended the first deportation flight in June 2022 and that led Interior Minister Swella Brefman to suggest leaving the ECHR, of which Britain was one of the first signatories in the 1950s. But very briefly, if we talk about withdrawal from the ECHR, four immediate consequences. First, it will violate the Good Friday Agreement. That will undermine the US relationship under a Biden administration. It will undermine the EU relationship. It will undermine the, the Northern Ireland situation. It will really, really damage international relations. The UN Refugee Agency chief has already condemned the UK for renouncing and dumping its international obligations on a developing country like Rwanda. To transfer a state's responsibilities in terms <coughs> of uh, um, determining if a person is a refugee or not to another country in another place abdicating, uh, renouncing that state's responsibility is clearly against the 1951 Refugee Convention. With opinion polls revealing the declining popularity of Rishi Sunak, the bill has laid bare internal divisions of the Conservative Party. 38 of Sunak's lawmakers abstained from the first vote on the bill in the House of Commons in mid-December. Sunak faces trouble from both sides of his party. Centrists worry the bill will result in sanctions from the ECHR, while those on the right demand the bill should override the entire Human Rights Act, the ECHR, the Refugee Convention and all other international laws. Brefman, having been dismissed as Interior Minister, has attacked Sunak over the bill and his Immigration Minister, Robert Jenrick, has resigned. And all these are welcome Christmas presents to opposition leader Keir Starmer, whose Labour Party is well ahead in the polls. Yet again, the Tory party is in meltdown and everyone else is paying the price. Economically, is the deal cost-effective for the British government? It's estimated by the UK Home Office the removal of a migrant Rwanda will cost the British government $80,000 more. In order to save taxpayers money, there needs to be a 37% drop in the number of illegal border crossings. The number of illegal crossings is indeed going down. It dropped by 36% in 2023 compared with the same period in 2022. Close, but not enough to break even the money spent. Sunak said when the Rwanda scheme's deterrent effect kicks in, it will start to save money. The overriding purpose of the Rwanda bill is to give voters the impression that the Conservative Party has the small votes issue under control before the next year's general election. But to win the election, the Conservatives have a lot more to deal with, including a cost of living crisis, stagnant economic growth, high interest rates and inflation. If the Conservatives do not make any substantial changes, 2024 may see a major power shift for the first time since 2010.